Ladies and gentlemen, the World Wrestling Association is proud to present International All-Star Championship Wrestling. Another edition of Bruiser Bedlam, coming to you from a fabulous premier center in Detroit. He's got his work cut out for him, Terry. As does any opponent that he gets in there with the Moose. Moose Cholak, about six feet five inches tall, well over 400 pounds. He'll get a good workout in there against Frankie Adonis, though. Frankie Adonis is one of the few wrestlers that can bench press 500 pounds. Now, wait a minute. What do we have at ringside? Dr. Jerry Graham has just moved into the picture. and along, oh, There's that seven foot two inch tall Kentucky Butcher. Now, we've seen this uh, more or less intimidation tactics happening for several weeks here. The Butcher coming out along with Jerry Graham while the Moose is in the ring. You hit it right on the head, Tara. It's intimidation. You hear a lot of talk between these two. As yet, though, I think the promoters are still working on signing a match between these two. Double hand to his side. to the Butcher. Moose is real tough for some little bit happy size. Hey, you heard a few words of wisdom from Dr. Jerry Graham. They've now seen fit to leave the ring side, having made their point, I guess. Yeah. He's trying to antagonize Moose Cholak, and I think that's just what he's doing, too. Sort of a king of the mountain kind of a story there. There can only be one power. So you've got the two of the biggest men in professional wrestling, Moose Cholak and the Kentucky Butcher. The Kentucky Butcher trying to make a reputation for himself, and certainly he would go a long way in that regard if he were able to defeat Moose Cholak. Moose doesn't look like uh, he got too awfully upset by the presence of the Kentucky Butcher. Adonis with Moose in the corner, he might not ought to want to do something like this. That's why. Oh, you see the ring sway? Oh, I think that thing's going to collapse. Hip toss by the moose, and Frankie Adonis is going to take a break. Uh, Adonis is smart at getting out of the ring. But that's why to make the moose even better. Adonis might be even smarter if he can go back to the dressing room. Well, that's true, but if he gets back in that ring, all that he's doing by getting out of the ring is giving the moose a few extra snortfuls of air, and that's when he's really mad. You got Moose Cholak, certainly a guy who enjoys, absolutely loves the sport of professional wrestling. And of course, Jerry Graham and his stable of wrestlers have been a constant thorn in the side of Moose Cholak over the years. The latest and perhaps the most dangerous threat to Moose Cholak comes down from the 7 foot 2 inch tall, 585 Kentucky Butcher. Can you imagine if those two got in the ring together? They'd have to reinforce the ring. And have to put double the floor. Frank Adonis just had his head slammed into the turnbuckle by Moose Cholak. Coming up later on today, ladies and gentlemen, the World Heavyweight Champion, the Great Wojo, meets Chris Carter, a title match right here on television. You'll want to be here for that. The Russian Igor Zakhov here to meet Rick Sets and many other stars. In the moment, though, it's Frankie Adonis with the advantage on Moose Cholak. He stands back nicely. 
And it's just taking things sort of easy here, making Adonis come to him. They lock up the massive arms of Bruce Cholak with the referee hold on Adonis. Oh, oh. Yeah, I heard that one. Yeah, I heard the hops from those. Bruce Cholak. And that wasn't his full strength either by any means, as you can see. You no, know, it's interesting, Jerry. I told you before that Yukon Moose used to be a boxer. In yeah. The Navy. Oh. Oh. The El Squasho. That's got to be it. Yeah. No way. Anyway. He just beat Frankie Adonis. Thank you. That's right there. Here comes Bruce Cholak. Nick the Bruiser certainly an outstanding tag team combination on occasion, too, I understand. Well, I don't know what he was that the Moose was a boxer in the Navy, and he just beat Frank Adonis. He started out as a boxer. I mean, Let's take a look at it again here. Frankie Adonis being shot at this point by Moose Cholak. Cholak takes his man over. Now watch the Moose. Right in he goes. 450 pounds of El Squasho on Frankie Adonis. Puts that belt right across his face. Coming up a tag team match. Stay with us. More action to come. As is customary in this period, it's question and answer again. And instead of me answering the questions, we have Alice Sullivan, who will be asking the question to Dr. Jerry Green Jr. about Wojo being retired. How? That's right, George. Uh, it's a great privilege to meet you, Dr. Graham. I wanted to ask that in person. Is the great Wojo retiring from the ring? <clears throat> a little quick background. The WWA, as George Cannon will tell you, is right now the oldest continually active promotion in the United States and Canada. Wojo was a WWA champion. He beat everybody they could put up against him. At that particular time, we had a plan. We thought the fans deserved this, to unify the belt, to have one champion instead of all these splinter group champions. Well, as fate would have it, I haven't had the connections. I was with every major promotion in the United States and Canada myself. I knew the people, I knew the promoters, but we were stonewalled. Wojo wrestled and defeated all the people that would wrestle him many times. Calypso Jim, even Chris Carter took his chances. That I respect him for. But I'll tell you this. Wojo retired with the stipulation that if any of the major wrestlers would agree to take him on, he would make a comeback. And by this we mean there's only four people that fit the bill. Well, maybe five. And that is Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage, Ric Flair, Jerry Lawler, or Sergeant Slaughter. If any of these five men who have been ducking Wojo for who knows how many years now, would agree to give him a chance to prove that, that he is, which he is, the greatest champion in the world and the most undefeatable wrestler in the history, he will be back. But if not, that's it. Well, Dr. Graham, I can attest to that. That is the God's honest truth. That uh, Dr. Jerry Graham, on behalf of the great Wojo, did challenge these people. And I swear, God can straighten me here if I'm telling a lie, that these people didn't even answer the letter. That's how much they were interested in that match. Well, I hope you have your paper and your pencil ready. We have the address for you. If you'd like to have wrestling in your hometown, if you'd like to write to your favorite wrestler, whatever, here's Hal Sullivan with the address. George, there are actually two addresses to write to. You can write to George Cannon, Box 3282, Tecumseh, Ontario, N8N2M4. Or if you're writing from the United States to Superstars of Wrestling, Box 32828, Detroit, Michigan, with the long zip 48232-0004. And we have another question for you, George. This one comes from Janelle Cheltenham of Detroit, Michigan. And she wants to know, how can I get a date with the Rougeau brothers? Well, this is a very good question. There's only one problem. If you have an idea of falling in love with the Rougeau brothers, you're too late. They love each other so much that there is no room to love anybody else. So. I don't know if the best way would be to write a letter to me or to my box number, Rougeau Brothers, or Jock Rougeau, or whichever one, Raymond, and address the letter that way. Well, if you enjoy playing Ann Landers, George, here's one from Eric L. Adams in Detroit. He wants to know, are Randy and Elizabeth married or dating because I have a crush on her? What's going on, <laughs> What's going on up there? Oh, my God. Randy and Elizabeth are married, so forget it. This uh, sort of follows on, actually. Andre Watts in Detroit, Michigan, or maybe it doesn't follow on. 
Whatever happens, says he, to Gorgeous George. And gosh, I thought everybody knew that. Gorgeous George, of course, is dead. Very sad ending to a great career. He was a journeyman wrestler under the name of George Wagner. All of a sudden, someone in Hollywood came up with this idea to curl his hair with the Georgie pins and the valet jeeves and everything, the perfume. He had a great career. It was ruined by someone who was jealous, calling up his wife and telling him that while he was on the road, he was fooling around. His wife divorced him, community settlement property, they were split. He went downhill all the way from there, Georgie did. Special message for all you charitable organizations, or any kind of an organization, actually. 